Hi everybody, it's Roger Cox with RogerCox.net and the Health and Freedom page uh, with the Facebook page, Health and Freedom with Roger Cox. Um, just got, got two things, well maybe three things I want to talk to you a little bit about today. I was going to make this really quick because I'm sitting in the car. I have not started up the engine yet. The, the window is up and uh, to be quite frank, and it's kind of toasty and warm in here. <laughs> so I'm not going to I'm not going to dilly dally. We're going to we're going to get this show on the road. This is a I've a this is a story I want to tell you. I've I've told this before, uh, but it's been a while, and some of you people that are new t new to me may not have heard it before. But it teaches a powerful lesson, um, and I'm going to explain that to you. There's a guy that I know by the name of Jeremy, and uh, he, he is a very successful network marketer in one of the major companies that have been around for 20 years or more. Uh, but uh, he wasn't always successful. You know, he, he started out like all of us, started out at the very beginning and uh, was able to uh, gradually, well, not gradually in his case, he actually moved pretty quickly, but was able to start from scratch with nothing to the, to, to the place where he is today. And uh, this is, I got, he, he told this story one time on an interview he did with, I think it was Eric Quarry, and something that I didn't know about him before, because I just assumed it, that he was, uh, he could do everything. You know, he was perfect, right? But uh, evidently, he was very good on one-on-ones, talking to people face-to-face, belly-to-belly. He was very charismatic, and he could uh, he, he did very well with that. He was able to build his income, his business, up to a, to a pretty healthy level. And it got to the point where he was uh, attracting the attention of, of some of the, uh, you know, the, the big people in the company that he was with. And he was invited to speak on stage, you know, in front of, you know, this was like a, if you can picture... But maybe you've seen the uh, the basketball arena in Salt Lake City where the Jazz play. And picture that just being clear full. And so he's invited to speak to an event that was had that many people that was there. And so he said, yeah, I'll do, I'll do that. And so he invited all these people, you know, all the people he, he sponsored and uh, the, the people that were his friends. He had a big group there, and they were all out in the audience. And he's backstage. And uh, so he... Uh, he had never really, let me kind of make some clarification here. Up to this point, all of his recruiting and everything had been pretty much, like I said, one-on-one, -on -one, belly to belly. He was very good at that. But evidently, one of his weaknesses was speaking in front of groups of people, particularly large groups of people, such as what you might find in a basketball arena. So anyway, he goes out on the stage. You know, there's, there's thousands of people, you know, all up in the bleachers or up in the balcony looking down on him. The, the light is on him. The spotlight is on him. He opens his mouth, and his mind goes out his ears. You know, his, his mind is gone. He, he draws a blank, and he uh, can't think of anything to say in front of all these people. So he uh, <laughs> he turns around, and he walks back, goes backstage. You know, it, he's, a, he's completely shut down. And while he's backstage, you know, he's, a lot of things are going through his mind. You know, at this point, he's thinking, you know, what am I, what am I going to tell all those people that I, that I invited to this event? You know, how can I face them? I'm, you know, he was embarrassed, you know, to the to the bone, you know, and so you you can kind of imagine the situation that he was in, but uh, he he made a decision. He had to, he had to think about it a little bit first, but you know, does, does he quit right there? Does he leave network marketing? Does he go out and does he talk to his followers? Does he try to make excuses for? For what had happened, or what would you do in a case like that, where you just you built this event all the way up, and then all of a sudden, when it's your turn to perform, uh, your mind just goes blank, and you and you shut off. And so he made a decision that he was not going to quit then, that he was going to go on, and he was going to overcome this problem that he had about speaking in large groups of people. So he went to the organizers of the event, and he told them to basically he told them to give him another shot. You know, schedule him for another event sometime, and he would and he would come and he would talk, and uh, in the in the meantime, you know, he uh, began to prepare himself. He began to do what he needed to do to get better at, at speaking to people. And uh, long story short, you know, now he's like I said, he he talks to thousands of people, pretty much on a daily basis. I think, you know, he's he's come he's come a long way. So I'm going to we're going to uh, compare that to you. When you someone tells you you need to do a Facebook Live, <laughs> and your mind, your heart starts beating, and the, the sweat comes down, you know, and your your belt gets soaked because of all the sweat that's coming down, and you're just scared to death. You know, I can't do a Facebook Live. I, I can't talk to people. I can't be in front of people. I can't even talk to this itty bitty phone. 
especially if I know it's going live, I can't do that. So, you know, what, what do you do? So if I'm going to give you some tips, I'm going to give you some hints to make that transition a little bit easier. And then the third part of my, my, uh, my video today, so we're on part two now. I did the part one about telling the story about Jeremy. Part two is how you can uh, use that example, you know, the experience of Jeremy, to overcome your fear of being on Facebook Live. And the third part is I'm, I've got a call to, call to action. I've been working on my call to actions. So stick around for the call to action. Uh, I've, I've been practicing. I, I need your cooperation here. So anyway, part two, Facebook Live. How do you go from being a quivering mass of jelly, even just the thought of doing a Facebook Live, to, to where you're at least doing it? You know, it may not be professional. And face it, it's not going to be professional. I'm sitting here in my... In my overheated car, as I mentioned earlier, the, the windows the windows up and it's hot in here. It's it's not professional by any means, and I'm not a professional speaker. But I've gotten to the point where I can push the button, it goes live. You know, and even when the thing goes three, two, one, you know, I I freak out a little bit, but I go ahead and do it. And I'm going to give you some hints on how you can get to that point. Okay, so number one, it it comes down to just doing them, just practice. But there are ways you can practice without. Uh, without broadcasting to the whole world, if that's your fear, that you're going to broadcast to the whole world. That's that's the ideal at some point. But until you get to that point where you feel comfortable with that, there are some things you can do to practice uh, speaking into a camp, into a camera, into a microphone, uh, into your, your your cell phone, or on your iPad like I use. So, here, so here's the thing. every Almost every smartphone, iPad, or tablet has some... Uh, video making capabilities you look in the, the photography app that you've got and you can take pictures there but you can also take videos now there's several things that you can do with those videos um, number one you can just record them to your to your device and they're on there nobody sees them but you unless you share your your device with somebody you know but all the, all the videos are there only you can see them you can practice to your heart's content you know make that little heart happy um, and you can see, I mean, you're, I'm going to warn you, <laughs> the first couple times you see yourself on video, you know, you, you, you're you going to die. You're absolutely going to die because you're, you're going to be thinking, oh, man, I look terrible. I look horrible. I, I can't do this. I sound terrible. I, you know, there's no way. But here's the thing. Just keep doing them. Just keep recording them. You can always delete them. You know, once you got it done, delete it. Just practice talking in, talking into your mic or looking straight into your your device and just talk. It could be about anything. It doesn't even have to make sense. Just practice till you get comfortable with talking into your device. And like I say, if you, if you don't like it, you can always delete it, start all over, and you just keep practicing that. Okay, then the next step. The next step is, <laughs> you, you, you guessed it, going live on Facebook. Now, there's a, you don't have to go live to the whole world all, all at once. A lot of people don't know this. But you can restrict where your live broadcasts go. And in fact, I, I kind of played around with that this morning. I, I sent out a birthday live birthday notice to a friend of mine um, where I just I sang happy birthday to her. You, you think that's scary. But you can go to your, your settings, uh, your, your security settings, and most of your stuff is going to public. But you can drill down. And uh, if you click on the public button and you go down, it's going to say make it public, make it to just your friends. Make it. You can exclude these friends, but there's, there's sometimes there's a little more button there. You can click on the more, and it'll open up even some more options. And one of those options is going to be to just share your video to specific people, and and you actually you can just you can share it just to yourself too. Uh, one of those options is just the only one that's going to see it is you. But one of the options is to share it to a specific person, and that's what I did today. I shared it to a girl, to a lady. She's no longer a girl. I knew her as a girl, but now she's grown up. Um, she's having a birthday today. So I sent her a live video, and I, I restricted it to, to just her timeline. Now, the people that go on her timeline is, is going to see it, but uh, it, it didn't go to the whole world like a, you know, like a broadcast does. So it's a, you're doing the same thing, but you just got a smaller audience that you're talking to. And if you're really, if you're really nervous, you can restrict that down to where it's, it's just going to you. And so you just you practice, and the more you do it, the better you get. You know, when you started swimming, you know you, you weren't the perfect swimmer right away. You got in the water and you flailed a lot. You swallowed some water. You know, you 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 weren't good when you were first started swimming. 
but just like swimming, speaking, speaking on camera to a Facebook Live audience, it does get easier. Okay, so that's what I suggest you do if you if, if it's going on Facebook Live just scares the bejeebies out of you. Um, work up to it. You know, take it in small steps. You can start out just doing the recorded videos, you know, where only you see them, and you can practice all you want. Delete them, start all over. You can, you, you can make false starts 600,000 times if you want. Just practice getting into the habit of speaking into one of these things, looking into the camera, and just get, get used to that idea first. And then once you've got that, then you can start expanding out. You can increase your audience, you know, going from to where you're, you can do your Facebook Lives, as I mentioned, to where only it only goes to your timeline. You can specify it to a number of diff, certain individuals if you want to do that. And there, there's a whole bunch of options if you go in there and look. And then finally, you can broadcast it to the world. And that's where you eventually want, want to go with this. Okay, so that was uh, topic one and topic two. Topic three, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm perfecting my call to action. That's one of the things i got to work on. And it's one of the things, a lot of times when I'm doing these videos, I I forget. You know, I get bit, I get started talking, and I forget to, to tell you what I want you to do. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to talk about an opportunity. Not my opportunity, but it's it's your opportunity. A lot of you as network marketers, when you when you start, or even now that you've got some experience behind you, you uh, you really don't know how to do it, especially online. And sometimes your uplines or your mentors are helpful, and sometimes they are not, because they they don't really know how to do it online. You know they've you know they come from the old school, and they the online stuff is a little bit new to them. Or they hear a few f snippets and fragments of how to do things online, but they haven't really put it together in a package, and so you're you're basically experimenting. They're telling you just to, you know just post stuff online, without really telling you how to effectively do that. So when you when you start out, you you need you need some help. You need some help, and one of the things I found is a community of help really makes things a lot easier. I I found a community that I've that I've gotten into. And, you know, with Facebook, with Snapchat, with Pinterest, you know, all the social media, with video blogging, with, uh, with blogging in general, with p making ads for Facebook, you could do that on your own. You can figure that out. You can, you can learn and do that on your own. But it's going to take you a long time. And by the time you get it figured out, uh, you know, like, things are going to change. Like, Facebook changes every day, the way they do things. And you, it's really hard to keep up with it. But in this community, we have people that are experts in in all of those, and they they're doing it every day. They're they're digging down into the insides of Facebook. They're figuring out what works, and what what doesn't. It's the same thing with Snapchat and all of that. And so they once they get this knowledge, they're in our community and they share it. So I don't have to learn all there is to know about Snapchat because if I have a question, I can go to one of these people and they will walk me through it. They will they they will tell me how to do it. Not only that, but they also put together instructional packages, and they uh, they put those together, and they're they're available for you. If if tomorrow I wanted to go out and learn how to uh, how to best place ads and and uh, do it effectively with my money, there's there's people on there that are experts on that. That they've created tutorials. Like I can go to those, and so that the or if nothing else, I can go on Facebook. We have a we have a group, and you can go in and just ask your question. And anybody out of 100,000 people could chime in and say, you know, I've, I've experienced this. This is what I did. So it's a great community. It's, it's a community that you can, you can take part in. If that was the only thing, that would be worth it. But uh, if you want to, once you start getting leads, you know, with your online marketing, you're going to start getting people coming in, and you're going to start needing to have some way to organize those, those contacts. So a lot of people use a contact manager. If you go and buy a contact manager from some of these some of these companies, uh, you're you know you're looking at some expenditure expenditure every month, and uh, you know it varies depending on how good they are. With the community I'm in, the uh, there, there's a, a contact manager included included in, in in the package. Auto responders. You know, once you have the the customer relations manager, then the auto responders then come in. And you can customize, you know, who gets your email list. You can manage your email list. And again, if you get that from other sources as a separate package, it's going to cost you some money. Money that you could be using for Dairy Queen. All right. Okay. 
So we have the autoresponder, we have the customer relations manager, blogs. Blogs are a big thing nowadays. But who has time to, well, I'm not going to say that because a lot of people obviously do have time. But it takes some time to set up a blog and then to actually get people to, to find that blog. You know, it's quite a process. With the, uh, with the people that I'm with, you can literally set up your blog with three clicks of the button. Now, you have to fill it with some content, but your blog can be set up with three clicks of a button. And that is included in the package. So you've got the community, you've got the autoresponder, you've, you've got the customer relations manager, and you've got the blog. And the only thing you need to provide is the, is the domain for where it's hosted at. They take care of everything else. It's, a, it's kind of a plug-and-play. It's all the plugins that go to your, to your blog. All that is there. Um, it's, it's included. Okay. Uh, funnels, if you know what funnels are. Uh, they're basically web pages where you uh, people go to your to a web page and it's usually you're offering something of value and in order for them to get that thing of value that you're offering they put in their name and their email address at the least sometimes a phone number and so that, that's how you uh, get people to your offer those are called funnels you can uh, make them yourself but like I said you know a lot of us don't have time to do that and we don't have the expertise we don't know how to do the, the copywriting um, to do it to, to do a good one this community has those already prepared for you you just you got a link you copy it and it goes in it and it's integrated into your account and so all the leads go into your autoresponder goes into your customer relations manager and it, it, it's all all of that and more I haven't even touched on a lot of this stuff but all of that is available if you were to get that separately in pieces you know we're talking you know it could be anywhere from a couple hundred dollars a month to to a thousand dollars a month depending on what you get and you know how extensive you get you can get it a lot cheaper if you go through this go through this package that I have. Um, it's less than a couple hundred dollars a month, considerably less than a couple hundred dollars a month. Um, if you're going to be in business, you're going to have some overhead. You know, just consider it part of your overhead. If if you are in a network marketing company, well, chances are your company requires that you uh, you have a a certain amount of product, or you have some overhead in that company that uh, that that you need to be need to be doing. Just consider it part of your business expense. If you're doing a subway and you, you had to pay $100 a month for your overhead, you'd think that you got that really, really cheap. And, you know, because the, the overhead for a subway or for anything else is, you know, you're talking thousands of dollars. So it's cheap. It's cheap com with, compared with what you get. So uh, that's pretty much my video today. I, look, you know, I just want to talk about my friend who, give an example of how he went from being scared to death to talking to people, to where he is today, how you can take that experience and relate it to your Facebook Live experiences, how to get comfortable with talking into your into your iPad or into your uh, your, your phone or, or whatever it is that you have, and then I'm working on my call to action. You know, there's there's certain things I want. I give away a lot of free stuff. I get a lot give away a lot of free information, and you're welcome to that. And just you know, let me know if you want some of it. But I also have some stuff that if you invest in, you can take your network marketing business to the top. It's got all the tools you need. Uh, it's something that every network marketer needs. You know, I'm reminded of the, you know, back in the gold rush days, when they were finding gold in California, there were people that went out and mined for gold, and some of them got rich mining for gold. There were a lot of them that didn't get rich mining for gold. But you, do you know who, what group of people their income was consistent? the people who were selling the tools and the supplies to the miners. If you were selling picks and shovels and gold pans and mules and horses and donkeys, you know, a lot of those did better than the actual gold miners. So there's money in providing tools and, and the know-how, providing the know-how to people. And it's the same way as network marketing. There are those who, who make it big and who do well. There are those who, uh, who struggle and, and maybe don't do so well. And then there are the, those who can provide the tools, the the knowledge, to help those people to to reach their dreams and goals. So that's that's my video. I went long, much longer than I thought I was going to. And again, I'm sweating. It's hot in here. So uh, go to my Facebook page, facebook.com/slash Health and Freedom with Roger Cox. My blog. I'm uh, kind of working on on that again. Basically, 
I, I, that's where I store my videos. All these videos I've been doing, I, I save them to my computer, and then I send them up to my blog. So some of them are just videos, and some of them actually I've taken the time to put some text with it, because that's really what you need to do if you're going to do the SEO, if you know what SEO is. You need, you need to have some text so that the keywords can be found. But uh, you can go to my blog, and like I said, some of it's just videos, some of it's just videos and text, and the, my contact information is on there. Um, so I encourage you to do that. That's my call to action. Going to go out and maybe get me something to eat. Maybe I, I talked about Dairy Queen a little bit ago. Maybe I should go to Dairy Queen. I will talk to you later, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.